great advantage the witness pack it's Goulding that's a good kick Hampson's underneath it oh he's lost it well picked up by Myers it's back to one good run by David Myers former Wigan player Wigan's turn to defend not often we see this in the early stages at Wembley Sorensen again looking for a powerful game could be his last game in his career thinking of retiring Goulding good run by Goulding to Richie Earls going for the line he's over yes and Richie Earls is over for the first try of the afternoon it was a sharp short darting run by Bobby Goulding and that extra yard of pace from Richie Earls the Great Britain second row just took him over there he had to reach out but they all count his 14th this season his most important one and it's four points to nil for witness yes yeah, it's a good work by uh, Bobby Goulding here he gets the ball comes back to the blind side steps inside the marker goes in between two players floats one out to Richie Ayres who stops short of the line but he hasn't grounded the ball so with his momentum and rolling over allows him a fair try here's Richie Ayres now front on you can see him he's palmed off the winger he stopped his motion, but he rolls over and reaches across the line, which is a fair try. It's no double movement. The kick. Oh, it looks a beauty from Davis. It's straight between the posts. Wonderful kick there from Jonathan Davis. That's a good one to Dennis Betts down this outside. He's got Robinson inside him. I think he's held up. He is held up. Good decision and good position there by referee Russell Smith. Notice how he was behind. And that's the advantage of being a referee at 29 years of age. Yes, here comes Dennis Betts straight down the sideline. He uses the side really well and he passes back inside to the winger who heads for the line, puts it down. And because he's been held over, Ray, with the new rules, uh, before the fifth tackle, Wigan get the head and feet. So, Wigan still pressed, trailing six points to nil. Joe Lydon. 78 degrees down there, very warm for the players. To Clark, looks for the dummy, scrambles, scrambles over. Witness, desperate in defence here. Goulding races in, but misses the man, gives the overlap. Botica to Skerritt, going for that line. He's got Spruce to stop him, and Skerritt is in! Kelvin Skerritt is in! It all started when Bobby Goulding raced in. He missed Edwards, the overlap was given, and poor Stuart Spruce really had no chance stopping this 17 stone prop forward. Kelvin Skerritt, and Wigan ripped back straight away. Six points to four. Yes, it's uh, the, the uh, knock-on earlier by witness has proved costly. You see Edwards here, he just stands around Bobby Goulding. Ball goes out into Bodiger. Bodiger sees a little gap. Skerritt goes through the hole, pushes away Courier, heads for the sideline. Spruce comes across. He's just too strong and powerful and goes over for a good front rowers try. There we see the man, strong, hard, pounding, 17 stone. Spruce takes him high, he tries to wrap around the ball, but he's just not big enough or strong enough to hold a man like Skerritt. Good try, equal Fred Griffiths. Wigan's record of 176 in the season, and he does. Ranobotica possibly not aware of equaling the record, but he does. 1958-59, when the South African Fred Griffiths, possibly watching this now in Perth in Australia, made leads. The great history of Welshmen in this final, but witness now surging forward by Marlow, the Kiwi has the speed of a centre. This, this lad, Wigan with the advantage, but still the scores level. Six, he's cut Thomason going for the line. Oh, he scores! He takes everybody by surprise. To the delight of those witness fans, he's dreamed for 22 years of appearing here at Wembley. 
He told me some days ago that he, he thought that dream had disappeared, having lost time and time again in semi-finals. And here he is with a try. What a start for this Kiwi. Yes, he takes the ball here from a standing start. It looks like he's just settling one down for a witness move. But he, uh, friend of body, I found him a little bit harder than that. And he crashes through him, then goes through uh, Stevie Hansen and goes for the try line like a little 20-year-old rather than a 37-year-old. Here he goes. This is a good little handoff. Just straight to Hansen, pushes him up as well. And he's got a little bit too much pace for the cover. And over he goes. Davis now coming in to increase the lead. He does. Another two points for the Welshman. With this 12, Wigan 6. See that OK? But it wasn't what he meant to do, I think. Edwards. That's a good kick. Not going in, though, but it keeps uh, John Devon uh, pen down here. And he lost the ball for the second time. And here's a try. It's deep ball. He's going. Mistakes. John Deverer just had to bring the ball away. Take the tackle. And Dean Bell says, Thank you very much. I'll have the try. 15 this season. And Wigan back in the frame. Yes, well, this is certainly one of the things that you dread in rugby league. Bringing your ball up when you're the last line defence, getting tackled very heavy, losing the ball. There's no one else, no other teammates there to give you a hand. And as we can see, over they go for a try. Dean Bell goes in probably for the simplest of tries he scored. And I think we can see the quick thinking here of uh, Martin Afire. Down goes uh, Devita, loses the ball. Afire picks it up. Looks inside, the try's on. Good support play from the skipper there, Dean Bell. It's a nightmare start for Devereaux, but we know he's a good footballer and he, he's played at international level. Um, he's, he's still got another 60 odd minutes to pull himself out of it. And, and it really is a goal kicking competition between this uh, Kiwi, Van Obotikin, and the Welshman Jonathan Davis, two of the best kickers in world rugby. Botica then. Mm, it's just hovering, it's there. Just hovers over that crossbar, but. They all count, 25 minutes gone, all square, with this 12, Wigan 12. And if the match stays like this, so finally, boys, there won't be a soul leaving early. Just one word about uh, Kurt Sorensen, word of encouragement for the witness supporters. Uh, Kurt Sorensen on the bench at the moment, but there's nothing particularly wrong with him. He's just being rested, and uh, we'll know that we'll go back into the action later. And Asini Faimalo back on, as Phil Larder indicated. Farah. There it is, number 12, Faimalo. Good ball from uh, Farah to Betts. Good run by Betts now then. Has Betts got the pace? No, the ankle tap again. But that's the glimpse of the speed, and there is Kurt Sonnison. The wet towel over his head, cooling down. But Wigan starting off. A pace, oh, it's a try! Wigan are in, Sam Palaper. The Kiwi combination. Dean Bell and Sam Panapa combine. Panapa's in. What a day for this Kiwi. Twelve months ago, his contract was up at Central Park. He was on his way home to Auckland. A sudden change of heart by coach John Mooney. And Sam Panapa was snapped up again for another 12 months. And there's his reward. Yes, you can see it here. Wigan have come out very strong again this second half. Dean Bell busts through a tackle, releases that ball there, and Panapa's going over. And that was what I was talking about just before half time. In the first half, Wigan were making these breaks, but the ball was being wrapped up. They would have wrapped Dean Bell up there, but being able to get it away like he did then, the support plays there, and Panapa goes over for a try. Yes, Wigan have a habit of hitting aside hard after. Half time, I saw them put two tries past Castleford in a championship game not a fortnight ago. Just after half time to clinch the championship. Are they doing the same here as Botticus Dole sails through the pulse and he continues to write his name into the 
the record books at Wigan for the most goals and the most points in a season. There's the hooter. Sam Panapa and the Wigan crowd throw their hands in the air. And that man, Dean Bell, the skipper, inspiration to his side, as was this man, Paul Hume, but things didn't go well for him. 20 points to 14 for Wigan and Dean Bell, the first Kiwi to win the Lanstod since Wigan's own Cess Mountford way back in 1951. The man of the match, he couldn't be any happier. And that trophy that cost £60, the 1993 Silk Cup Challenge Cup, presented by the Earl of Derby. A check for £36,000 to Wigan and the 25,000 supporters who've travelled from that Lancashire town, delighted as ever. Stevie Hampson, Martin Dermott, the tricky, lively hooker. Hampson, about whom there was such doubt this week with a calf strain.